So the, the paper that I will present is a paper on state taxation and the reallocation of economic activity. And this is joint work with Josh Hall, who is at Stanford. So what is the impact of state taxation on economic activity? Well, this is a question that has been heavily debated in both academic and policy circles. In particular, uh, there is ample anecdotal evidence suggesting that companies tend to move from high-tax states into low-tax states. Recent examples include uh, Mercedes, moving from New Jersey to Georgia, Toyota and Schwab, moving from California to Texas, also here you can see a quote that is taken from a newspaper article that was written in the, in the context of a proposal to increase the, the property tax in the state of Illinois in 2011. And so this is a quote from the, from the head of the Illinois Manufacturers Association stating that the only businesses that will benefit are the moving companies that will be helping many of my members move out of the state. Also more recently, uh, a couple of years ago, the state of Connecticut massively increased the, the corporate tax and in response to that, uh, Aetna is now threatening to leave Connecticut, and GE is currently moving away from, from Connecticut into Massachusetts. In particular, the, the GE case has been all over the news uh, with typical press articles such as this one, uh, taxes chase GE out of Connecticut. Okay, and the culprit, uh, according to the news, uh, is precisely state taxes, maybe the fact that Connecticut has increased uh, the, the corporate tax from 7.5% all the way up to 9%. Okay, so overall, and going back to the previous slides, so all those anecdotes uh, are very much in line with the view that state taxation may depress economic activity, or that it might move it elsewhere by essentially putting a wedge between the pre-tax and after-tax profits. Okay, so in a sense, this is uh, valuation 101 for those of you in, in corporate finance. Uh, so essentially, if you increase the taxes, then those projects that were positive and at the margin, they become negative and PV, and so it becomes optimal to either disinvest from those projects or to push them elsewhere. On the other hand, it could also be that state taxation just doesn't matter. And that could be the case if, for example, the cost of moving to a different state or the cost of avoiding the taxes outweigh the benefit. Now, as you can imagine, there's a big policy debate uh, on the question. Okay? And policy institutes, uh, they are literally jousted over this question. And they disagree about pretty much everything. They even disagree in the way how they characterize the academic literature. For example, one of the policy institutes, uh, the Tax Foundation in, in Washington, D.C., uh, they argue that nearly every empirical study of taxes and economic growth, published in a theory with academic journal, finds that tax increases harm economic growth. In contrast, the exact opposite statement is made by another policy institute, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, that disagrees with the Tax Foundation and argues that the Tax Foundation statement is simply false. To the contrary, there is no clear research evidence that lower taxes help state economies grow. Okay, so as you can see, there is a lot of disagreement out there, uh, but of course, at the end of the day, uh, this is an empirical question, so it will have to be settled empirically. Now, the challenge is that from an empirical perspective, uh, this is a question that is actually quite difficult to answer. The reason being that there are two main obstacles. So first of all, there is nothing random about state taxation. Okay, so presumably there are very good reasons uh, why states would change their taxes, and there's very good reasons they can correlate with all sorts of things, uh, such as changes in, in local economic conditions. Okay, so for example, it could be that the state is not doing well, and as a result, employment is going down in the state. At the same time, if the state is not doing well, it seems very plausible that at some point the state authorities are going to get desperate to raise tax revenues, and ultimately they have no choice but to increase the taxes. And therefore, in this type of scenarios, what we would have is some correlation between an increase in, in state taxes and a subsequent decrease in employment. Okay? But this correlation would be driven uh, by the specific source of endogeneity. Okay? So in other words, uh, correlation uh, needs not be uh, causation. And then the, the second obstacle is that ideally, in order to go after this question, uh, what we need to have is detailed micro data on the firm's operations, so that we can really assess whether companies are relocating their operation across states, or whether they are in fact simply reducing the scale of their operations. And so in this research, uh, what we do is we try to overcome these two obstacles. First of all, in terms of the second obstacle, uh, what we do is we use data at the establishment level from the US Census Bureau. And clearly these data are ideal uh, in this context since they really allow us to track firms' operations across states. And then in terms of the, the first obstacle, which is the tougher one, so what we do, and that's not going to be perfect, is we use information on the tax filing status of companies to distinguish between two different types of firms. Okay, so specifically we distinguish between uh, the C corporations, the so-called C corps, and the past two entities, uh, essentially the S corporations, the S corps. And then the, the key point that we exploit in the paper is the fact that these two types of firms are subject to, to different taxes. Uh, specifically, the C-Corps are subject to the corporate income tax, tau C, 
whereas the past 20 are subject to the personal income tax tau p. Okay, and for lack of a better word, you can think of the first type of firms as being like a, like a treatment group, and the second type as being like a control group or a placebo. Now, to fix ideas and to illustrate our empirical setup, uh, let me show you a figure. So here you have the state of California and the state of Arizona. Okay, and let's assume that these are two companies from our sample. Uh, the first one is a C Corp, and the second one is a Past 20. Okay, and let's assume that other than that, uh, these two companies are very much comparable. Okay, in particular, let's assume that these two companies, uh, they both have one establishment in California and one establishment in Arizona. Then what we do is we look at what happens uh, if the state of California increases the corporate income tax. Okay, so in which case, you would expect to see some impact uh, on the C corporation, but none on the past two entities. And so in the context of this simple example, what our results imply is that what would be happening is exactly this. So the C corporations would reduce their operations in California, while at the same time, they would expand their operations in Arizona. As in contrast, we don't observe uh, any action at the, the past two entity, uh, which is very much like a control firm in this context. And then we also look at what happens if the state of California increases the, the personal income tax, in which case what we find is the other way around. So we find some action for the past two entity, but none for the C corporation. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, this is what we do in this research. Now let me give you uh, a very brief overview of the main results. So in the paper, we conduct two types of analysis. So first of all, we look at what happens at the extensive margin, meaning we look at changes in the number of establishments for a given firm in a given state. And then we also look at what happens at the intensive margin, meaning we look at changes in number of employees uh, within existing establishments. Okay, so here the question is whether companies close down establishments okay, or close down facilities, whereas there the question is whether companies reduce the number of employees within existing facilities. And so what we find is that uh, at the extensive margin, uh, a one percentage point increase in the state corporate income tax leads to the closing of 0.4% over C corporations establishments in the state. Okay, so to give an example, since we're in New York, so in New York State, the, the corporate tax is 6.5%. So this implies that if it goes up from 6.5% to 7.5%, then the C corporations in New York State are going to close down 0.4% of their establishments. Okay, so roughly one out of 250 establishments uh, would close down. Similarly, we find that a one percentage point increase in the state personal income tax leads to the closing of 0.2 to 0.3 percent of a past two entities establishment in the state. Importantly, when we look at the, the cross elasticities, uh, we find that they are small and insignificant. So we find no impact of the corporate tax on past two entities and no impact of the personal tax on C corporations. And finally, we believe this is a remarkable result. Uh, we find that half of these effects are offset by reallocation across states. We suggest that this very notion of tax competition across states is very much first order in the data. Okay, so going back to the, the previous example, so this implies that here, you know, out of this uh, reduction by 0.4%, actually 0.2% would be reallocated to, to other states in the US. Then when we look at what happens at the intensive margin, we find very similar results, and we also find similar results if we look at physical capital uh, instead of employment. All right. And so here's the agenda for the, for the remainder of this presentation. So the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna give you a very quick crash course on the taxation of multi-state companies, which as you will see is not entirely trivial. Then I'll briefly go over the data, show you the results and conclude. All right, so let me talk about the, the taxation of multi-state companies first. So the general principle when it comes to, to state taxes is that companies have to pay state taxes in those states in which they have what is called nexus. Okay, and the firm has nexus in the state if the company has either payroll or property in that state. Okay, that's the very notion of having physical presence in the state. Now, for companies that have nexus in more than one state, uh, those companies are, are going to have to apportion their profits into the different nexus states. Okay, this is something that is very technical. Uh, this is done according to a formula that is called the apportionment formula, okay, which is the formula that, that you see here. And so what it tells you is that the share of profits that will be taxed in the state uh, depends on the share of payroll, property, and sales that the company has in the state, weighted by the so-called apportionment factors. Okay, and there are three of them, uh, the payroll apportionment factor, the property apportionment factor, and the sales apportionment factor. Now, those apportionment factors are state-specific, so states are free to set them uh, the way they want. And what is very common is that states will set all three of them equal to one-third, and also common is to put more weight on sales, such as 50% or 100%. Now, to give you some sense for the, the mechanics behind this apportionment formula, uh, let me walk you over a simple example. Okay, so let's assume that we're back 
uh, in the previous example, where we have this company that has two establishments. So one establishment in California and one establishment in Arizona. Here, for simplicity, I'm just going to assume that all the operational factors are equal to one third. And also, I'm going to assume that the operations of this firm are 50-50. Okay, so 50% of employee property and sales at the California establishment and the other 50% at the Arizona establishment. And so in this case, if we compute the, the tax burden of this company in the two states using the abortion formula, uh, we find somewhat trivially that 50% of the profits of these firms will be taxed in California and the other 50% in Arizona. Now, let me refine this example a little bit uh, to make it more interesting. Okay, and so here, uh, let's assume that the, the operations are no longer 50-50, but instead we have some imbalance. Okay, and specifically, let's assume that 20% of the employees and property of this firm are at the California establishment and the, the, the remaining 75% at the Arizona establishment. And so in this case, if you recompute the, the tax burden using the apportionment formula, we now find that 33% of the profit of these firms will be taxed in California versus 66% in Arizona. So as you can see from this simple example, the general principle is that the more employees you have in a state, the higher your tax burden in that state. Accordingly, it seems very plausible that employment is going to be sensitive to, to changes in state taxes. Now, in terms of the analysis, uh, in our baseline, uh, we're going to keep things very simple, and we're simply going to study the sensitivity of employment with respect to the corporate tax and the personal tax, okay? which means that the results I'm going to show you are going to be effectively uh, the average effect across all the apportionment regimes. And then in auxiliary analysis that we have in the paper, we also look specifically at those different apportionment regimes, and what we find is that the, the results are stronger for those states that have a higher payroll apportionment factor, okay, which makes a lot of sense in this context. Now, as I mentioned earlier, so one of the key of the paper is that we're able to distinguish between those different legal forms of organization, okay, so C-Corps versus past two entities, and there are three main types of past two, uh, DS corporations, <coughs> partnerships, and sole proprietorships. And here, to give you a little bit of perspective on those different legal forms of organization, uh, you can see the evolution uh, of those legal forms over time. Okay, and here, this is the, the sample period used in the paper from 1977 until 2011. And so, as you can see, uh, over time, uh, the C-Corps have become less and less popular, whereas the past two entities, and especially the, the S corporations, have become more and more popular. Okay, in particular here, you have a little bit of a discontinuity around 1986, uh, which coincides with the Tax Reform Act of 1986 that was favorable towards S corporations versus C corporations. All right, now let me uh, very briefly describe the data and then we'll get to the results. So the data at the establishment level are obtained from the US Census Bureau. Then the tax data are obtained from a variety of sources and the, ma the main tax variables for our purposes are gonna be the corporate tax, the personal tax, and the apportionment factors. And on top of that, we also collect data on a series of other tax items that we're going to use as controls in the analysis. In terms of sample selection, so the, the sample period will go from 1977 <coughs> to 2011. Uh, we have two selection criteria. So first of all, we're only going to include firms that have at least 100 employees. The reason being that we don't really care about the, the moment pop stores and the, the very small firms. Also, we're going to restrict the samples to those firms that have operations in multiple states, uh, since we really care about those firms that have this potential ability to, to reallocate resources uh, across different states. Okay, so that, that yields our final sample that consists of 27.6 million establishment year observations corresponding to 650,000 firm year observations. Okay, and here you have some uh, summary statistics. So the way you should think about the, the average firm in our sample is a firm that has operations in 6.5 states as an average 43 establishments corresponding to 2,000 employees. And then when you look at C-Corps versus past two entities, we, we find that on average the, the C-Corps are <coughs> All right, so let me get to the results. And so as I mentioned earlier in the paper, we conduct two types of analysis. So first we look at the extensive margin and then we revisit at the intensive margin. And so let me start by, by showing you what we find at the extensive margin. So here in those regressions, uh, at the extensive margin, the dependent variable is going to be the count of establishments at the firm state year level. Okay, so if a company has, let's say, 10 establishments in, in New York State in 2011, that would be 10 for that specific observation. And then when we run the regression, on the right-hand side, uh, we're going to have the two tax rates, so the corporate tax and the personal tax, interacted with two dummies that indicate whether the company in question is a C-Corp or a pass-through entity. Okay, and then we have a bunch uh, of controls. And so here, each of the different columns represents a different variation uh, of the baseline specification that we use to estimate this regression. Now, importantly, we find that the results are very stable across all specifications. Okay, and to be more precise, 
uh, what we find is that the coefficient of the corporate income tax is negative and significant for C corporation. Okay, so which means that if you increase the, the corporate income tax, this is going to be associated with the reduction in the number of establishments of C corporations in the city. Similarly, we find that the, the coefficient of the personal income tax is negative and significant for pass-through entities. And finally, and importantly, when we look at the, the cross elasticities, uh, we find that they are small and insignificant. Okay, and this is very reassuring uh, in this context because this suggests that what we find uh, is indeed the actual effect of the taxes as opposed to just being some spurious correlation that presumably would also be picked up by those placebo terms. Now in terms of the economic magnitudes, so for C corporations with respect to the, to the corporate income tax, uh, we have seen that the coefficients were between negative 0.02 and negative 0.03. Okay, so these are the two coefficients you see here in the, in the more conservative specifications. Also, since the average number of establishments of C corporations in a given state is seven, this implies that an increase in the corporate income tax by 100 basis points corresponds to a decrease in number of establishment by 0.3 to 0.4 percent. Okay, this is what is called uh, in the tax literature tax elasticity. So here, this boils down to a tax elasticity of 0.3 to 0.4. Okay, and the way you should interpret those numbers is, you know, in terms of the example I provided at the beginning. So let's say in New York State, uh, the tax is 6.5 percent. It goes up to 7.5 percent, and what happens is taking the upper bound, uh, the, the C-Corps in New York State are going to close down 0.4% of their establishments. Then in terms of the past two entities with respect to the personal income tax, uh, we find a very similar uh, tax elasticity, even though it is uh, a little lower on average. Next we look at the question of the reallocation across states. And so here what we do is we, we re-estimate our baseline specification. But now instead of only having uh, the, the tax rate uh, in the state in question, we also have the average tax rate across all the other states in which the company has operation. And as you can see, when we look at the, the relevant coefficients for the other states, uh, we now find the opposite pattern. Okay, so we find that they are positive and significant, and they are roughly half the magnitude of the baseline coefficients. Okay, so here this implies that if, for example, the corporate income tax increases by 100 basis points, then C corporations are going to close down 0.03 establishments in the state, while at the same time, they're going to open up 0.016 establishments in the other states. Similarly, if the personal income tax increases by 100 basis points, uh, past two entities are going to close down 0.01 establishments in the state, but open up 0.005 establishments in the other states. Okay, so what this implies is that uh, roughly half uh, of our baseline effect is actually offset by this reallocation across states. Uh, we suggest that indeed you know, this entire notion of tax competition across states is very much first order in the data. All right, so that's what we find at the extensive margin. And then what we do is we redo this entire analysis, but at the intensive margin. Okay, meaning at the intensive margin, we're going to look at changes in number of employees within existing establishments. Now here I'm not going to go uh, into the details, but you know, the only thing I wanted to mention is that the results we have at the intensive margin are very much consistent with what we have at the extensive margin. Okay, and that's the case uh, both for the, the coefficient estimates that we get, for the economic magnitudes that we can infer, uh, and also in terms of this, this notion of reallocation across states. Okay, so very similar pictures when we look at the intensive margin. All right, and finally, in the paper, we have a bunch of additional results. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go over, over those results, but let me just uh, mention the first one. So one thing that we find is that uh, our results uh, are stronger for, for those large publicly traded firms, okay? and they get even stronger for the multinational firms. Now, this is something that is very intuitive, right? because you know, presumably those firms that are in many countries, these are firms that, that are super mobile, and they expect our results to be, to be strong. Okay? So that makes a lot of sense uh, intuitively. Then we have a bunch of other results that, you know, if you're interested, uh, you can see all of them in the book. All right, so let me conclude. And so my conclusion is just a brief summary of uh, what I discussed. So, so the key message of the paper is very simple. Uh, state taxes matter. Okay, so they matter both at the extensive and intensive margin. In particular, uh, we find strong evidence for this reallocation across states. Uh, we suggest that, you know, this notion of tax competition across states uh, is very important in the data. On this note, thank you very much.